and it was a local boy who took the stage win into Bamako. Born around this area, Alan de Kloss gave everything he could to make his friends and family happy. They were out to greet him. My mum's here, my dad came from France uh, to Bamako, my whole family is here, so I guess it's the best present that I can possibly give them, he says. Another Dakar moment. Fabulous. Mark Coma increased his lead over Despray to 30 minutes. The first Dakar title for Coma was getting closer. In the cars, it was South African Junior de Villiers who took the stage win. He and his co-driver Tina Turner had some difficulties finding their way, but finally they clocked the fastest time. And courting disaster along the way. Ooh, how did that stay up? Jutta Kleinschmidt had a horrible day. She hit a tree stump, broke the front suspension. Even teammate Bruno Sabi couldn't help. Co-driver Pons just telling him to go on. Only had to wait for the assistance truck. Sometimes, when you think it's bad, it gets even worse. The Volkswagen assistance truck was down. Yes, Kleinschmidt was waiting, you're right. Nobody was hurt, but now the assistance needed assistance. Overall, leader Stephen Bellansel had his own troubles. For about 100 kilometers, he was caught in the dust behind Sousa. The Frenchman was not amused. Yes, he had a few words to say about it later on. Carlos, for about 100 kilometers I was behind you, didn't you see me? Not at all, never. He can't believe it, more in a moment. Bamako to Labe was next. 872 kilometers, it was enormous. 368 of those were under racing conditions. Beautiful Guinea and Cyril Despray took the stage win one minute ahead of Coma. The most impressive thing for him was the fans along the road. It's amazing, he says, almost like the Tour de France. Everybody's out here, 300 kilometers of liaison, I pass one car, but thousands and thousands of people. It really is a nice country. It's a very special place. The drama, though, was yet to start. It was a day to remember for Luc Alphonse. The Frenchman had more or less settled for second place behind teammate Pelle Hansel. Suddenly, the chance of his lifetime to win the Dakar came. Pelle Hansel had crashed, destroyed his transmission. It wasn't looking good. <laughs> Hit a tree just over there on the exit of a corner, and the tree destroyed the suspension, the transmission, everything, he says. The co-driver tried everything. They did get started again, but not for long. After a few meters, the car just broke down once more. Finally, they had to wait for the assistance truck. That meant a huge loss of time. They would drop down to fourth overall, and the victory to teammate Luc Alphonse. Frantic moments to no avail. The leader heading backwards. Our former ski world champion, Luc Alfond, was suddenly on the top of the ranking. He pushed to make the most of the situation, wins the stage, 
and taking position one in style. Second overall was now Gineo de Villiers, about 20 minutes behind Alphon, having learned that a tiny mistake can change everything. He took it a bit easy. Pena hands up, limping into the bivouac late at night to shake hands with Alphonse and wish him the best. Well, that's motorsport. Do that for 20 years, cars and bikes, you win races, I've lost races before the finish line, technical problems, errors, that sort of stuff, you just can't forget it. A lot of work, a lot of work to prepare for this race, and then everything is over with one mistake like that. That's the way it is. Stage 13, Labe to Tabacunda was next. 567 kilometers in all, 348 of them racing. Our big crowds again alongside the streets of the Dakar rally. Tragically, a child was hit by a car that day on the stage and died aboard the medical helicopter. So even amongst the celebrations, a black cloud once again over this event. Well, once again, the Super Special turned out to be a big navigation challenge, but after the big empty deserts, it was more a problem of vision due to heavy vegetation here. Well, the man with the best road plan was Giovanni Sala, the KTM rider, in third overall, clocked his first stage win of 2006. Duke Font took it serious again and uh, made sure of top spot. He won his second stage in a row to maintain that lead overall, even extending it a bit. His main rival now tried to make up some time, but realistically, de Villiers could only hope for a big error from Alfond. It was never over until it's over, of course. The Dakar had another nasty surprise. Tampa Kunda to Dakar. The surprise was the penultimate stage when everyone got lost. A stage that should have been more or less a parade turned into a very, very tricky one. The bikes, they were asking for help. They weren't getting it from the helicopter, not allowed to do that. And they were heading in all kinds of directions. Some even forgot how to ride, L not luckily. Nothing serious after this. And while Despray was still looking for the road, Mark Coma aimed for Dakar and took the overall win. Yamaha rider David Fretigny took his chance and claimed his first stage victory of 2006. Alphonse secured his win by shadowing Genial de Villiers. Even these guys got lost though. So many parallel tracks, he said. It was very tricky. You see, Sainz is not even here yet. We had to go back, turn around, searching the right way. And my aim was actually not to lose de Villiers. But turning around, seeing the uh, 307 of Sainz, the 305, the 301, I thought, who's genial again? Well, the last stage win in the cars went to Shishiritz, the BMW teammate of Alfie Cox, showing his potential, won the last real stage of 2006. So then, after another fatal accident on the penultimate stage involving yet another small child, the organisers decided to neutralise the final run to Lacrose. So it was all about putting on a good show at the end without the pressure of a super special. The rivals shook hands after a tough battle over more than 9,000 kilometers. Coma absolutely delighted to have taken it. Despray acknowledging his greatness. 
Wanted to win the Dakar. Winning stages is not that important. It's about winning the Dakar. I'm so happy with this result. I had no stage wins, that's for sure, but I don't care. I had a lot of second places, and winning it in the end is what it's all about. That's the important thing. Alfond, Roma, Peder Hansel celebrating the Mitsubishi success with three cars in the top four. Second place, of course, going to De Villiers and Volkswagen. Well, they didn't win it, but at least second place for De Villiers and five stage wins for the Volkswagen Armada. VW were back in the frame in no uncertain terms. Alphonse victory, though, a great triumph for the Frenchman. In the truck category, once more, it was Kamas with Vladimir Chagin who took the victory. It was the fifth title for the Russian. What an amazing performance.